That's right, we get to talk about Santa Claus doing things once again. Alright, we're back with the implications of the good stuff and, well, more interesting things that you're going to want to keep an eye on here. My absolute favorite edition. So, make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. So, we have 120 top performing decks out of this week here. Alright, so what we got here for the metagame chart? 15% purely. Huh. Or am I surprised about that? Nah, honestly not. Nah. I mean, we, we expected this to be the top performing deck. Cash tier on the follow-up here with one Fenrir and one Unicorn. The deck has maintained a huge presence. Okay. Super Heavy Samurai also kind of tying it up here. So Cash tier and Super Heavy Samurai. One of these decks is not a full power. <laughs> we have Vanquish Soul in the follow-up. I'm telling you, Vanquish Soul has been a very interesting deck to watch, like its development here. We also had 6.7 with Adam Anzipater. Block Dragon being left alone. Six, six Grass Super Heavy Samurai Shizu Vernal Sif Ad Emancipator. Yeah, let's say that ten times fast. Brandon's still performing out here, even though the deck feels like a, a lumpy pile of uh, not good. Exo Sister and Labyrinth still performing. I think the thing that's most interesting is Exo Sister still kind of following things up here. Then we had Tier Elements, Math Mech. And Sky Striker. Sky Striker still kind of performing is relatively interesting. We'll shift on down here and look at some of these numbers. 18 purely. Oh man, 7 Exo Sister. Okay. 5 tier elements. Tier still holding on. We had 4 Sky Striker here. One was an Invoke Sky Striker. That's interesting. We had 3 Code Talker Math Mech. So Math Mech still doing its thing. Not really all that surprised, honestly. We had 2 Magician. Some Mana Dome shenanigans here, which was a Bice Deal Scare Claw Mana Dome. And a Scareclaw Mana Dome. Okay, so very standard stuff here. We also had an anti-meta deck show up down here as well. And a Kashtira Generator. What's a Kashtira Generator deck? Okay. Alright, now for purely here. Now, so Alive went 6-1 and finished first at the Zenken CS 3v3. Alright, so the purely build as developed by the world champion. Uh for the purely mirror match with three Santa Claw, three triple tactics thrust for talents or Herald of the Abyss in the main deck are removal options for X purely norm. All right. Santa Claus is played over Kaiju monsters. As Santa Claus is special to the opponent's field and defense position, this allows any exceed monster to attack into Santa Claus and then can turn into Zeus during main phase two. Zeus has become a power card for this deck. Mainly purely players are running two to three by street in the main deck. Uh, besides protecting your purely uh, from the targeting effects of infinite permanence, it also allows you to attach for the draw power. Yeah, we, we've seen this. Now, this is going to be the relatively interesting list that we have for this here. You do see that we are playing the power cards here. So your whole goal is if you draw these, you can dump them off. Uh, I do think that I would want to play a Foolish Bro Goods almost, but your whole point is if you see this, you want to be able to yeet it so you can toggle for the search, get your field spell up and running, and then there's the Herald of the Abyss that they mention here, and then Santa Claus. The fact that they're worried about the purely mirror so much that they have Santa Claus allowing them to turbo out Zeus, which is their secondary win con, it makes a lot of sense here. But your main deck for this... Purely has developed so quickly in the OCG. We've talked a lot about it in terms of how the deck has been aimed to kind of hold things up in the format. I mean, we've seen Volcanic Shells. We've seen the Dark World package. You have so many cool ideas that have been presented for this. I'm not really surprised to see it do that well. And then, of course, your side deck is very, very standard for what they've seen down here. All right, so we also have Cash Deer developments here. So, what I think is most interesting about this is the fact that with these two limited to one, and then the field spell limited to one, this deck is still performing. With Purely and Cash Deer as the top contenders for April, many decks are now packing Kaiju Monster, Santa Claus, and the Divine Carnate as removal against X Purely Nor and Arise Heart. Cash Deer, in turn, could run a pointer of the Red Lotus in the side deck to pick off those Kaiju Monsters, Santa Claus, or Divine Carnate from the opponent. Man, there, when you have counter play in the counter play that really says something about like the 800 iq of the format here but 
the biggest things about this is like, even with these cards limited, they're focusing on these right now because, you know, taking away Purely's graveyard from them, actually, let's be honest here, Arise Heart is still a very powerful card. We, we've been joking in, in our format here that Arise Heart Pass won you so many games. And after you kind of strip off a lot of these numbers, you do kind of see the same thing. Obviously they do have Tomahawk. Tomahawk does do some little plays. Uh, they can obviously, you know, expedite the Baron and so forth, but the way that you're looking at this deck, it feels very, very standard. And once again, I want to point out, you know, they still have a pointer of the Red Lotus at three, and they did mention here that you do see that development of the counterplay here, that knowledge to rip cards away from your opponent here can be extremely useful in order to kind of capitalize and ensure that this deck can play the game. Because once again, you know, with your more limited options and things that you're kind of forced to endure, it's not to say that the deck is bad by any stretch of the imagination. No, it just means that you can't play as bad. All right, so Super Heavy Samurai here. So, this deck is, is very interesting. So, all seven Super Heavy Samurai decks that topped have opted for the same build of having that Cherry Exterior and Artifact Scythe. They're set up along with Boralode Savage, Baron to Floor, Girgagen X to fetch Cyberstein, which has also been able to summon Exterior from Extra Deck. Dagda is used to set up Scythe. This is why we don't have Scythe anymore, because look, it's become a problemsome card over here as well. All right, Retaliating Seize in the side deck to be used against purely when your opponent activates a purely quick place book card. Retaliating C effect could be activated in chain. Resolving the chain, Retaliating C would be special summoned, and it's a continuous effect would cause all cards to be sent to the graveyard to be banished. Instead, if your opponent chose to special summon a purely monster from the deck, then the discard card is banished. So Shadal Beast, Brow, and Rainbow Bridges of Elevation do not get their effects. So, for the pile that you are seeing here, um, you are seeing standard scythe lock, you are seeing Cyberstein for the exterior so that your opponent actually can't opt to play the game. Now obviously we're not going to have, you know, scythe, so you are going to lose a lot of that scythe lock. So whatever developments of this particular build will develop in terms of the TCG here, you're not going to have a lot of the same antics that I feel that we have from the troublesome OCG. <laughs> Shout out to Trap Eater down here as well. Vanquish Soul. Now, this is very, very interesting. So, Vanquish Soul is a new theme from Wild Survivors and features a standard mid range playstyle. One of the standard one card openers is Stake Your Soul to Special Summon Soul Rosin from the deck. You activate, uh, or you would add Dr. Madla from your deck, and then Rosin would be used to link summon the Rock of Vanquisher, whose effect to retrieve Rosin from the graveyard lets you normal summon the Dr. Madla to add, add the Soul Dust Devil from deck to hand. During your opponent's turn, Rock of Vanquish Soul will would activate. Now you'd special summon Rosin in the same column as your opponent's monster on summon Rosin's effect would activate. You'll add the heavy Borger, reject your hand. And then from one card, this setup sets up three disruptions. Vanquish Soul, Dr. Madlove can return effect monster with the lowest defense to the hand. Rosin's effect could destroy the other monster in the same column. And Dust Devil could flip an opponent's monster face down. Finally, Borger can special summon itself by returning Mad Love to the hand, and every Borger could use the effect to reveal Ma Dr. Mad Love to draw a card. You got all that? That's that's pretty amazing. By gaining plus one from Vanquish Soul Rosin, Vanquish Soul Dr. Mad Love, and Heavy Borger, and making the opponent minus one with Kaiser Varius, Vanquish Soul is slowly pull apart into card advantage. So Vanquish Soul monster effects require revealing Earth, Fire, and Dark Attribute monsters in the hand to activate. So Hand Traps, Kaijus, Maxi, a lot of these standard power cards are doing a lot of work for this deck. So you have an end, basically you have an unaffected boss monster here, and then the rest of your deck is going to be in the form of interruptions. Do keep in mind that we are playing Durandal. This actually does give you some tutoring options for the deck which is actually kind of interesting overall. And you do see those Ghost Reapers down here developing a lot of love and power too. So, uh, the limited regulation was announced just a week ago. The current format is somewhere between mid-range and combo with purely cashed era Vanquish Soul as top mid-range decks, Super Heavy and Ad Emancipator, some of the combo decks. Japan is more mid-range centric with purely cashed era and Vanquish Soul among them, while mainland of China, Taiwan, and South Korea have a mix of mid-range and combo with Super Heavy and Ad Emancipator kind of edging out some more of the metagame. We'll kind of have to, honestly, we'll have to wait and see how more of this develops. I mean, we do have Duelist Nexus on the horizon here, but everything that I'm kind of seeing here in terms of this 
has really opened up a lot of the doors to some of the more interesting things out here as well. So, what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.